tutorial today we're going to create is a pop art style portrait and so what you can see here is I have a finished example um, looking at sort of like a printed um, uh, image here um, screen printing was often used when pop art originally started and so that's kind of the effect we're going for here and then a very kind of bright um, and you know basic areas of color as well applied to a layer underneath that kind of a print layer so first thing we want to do is go ahead and do a search for an image of someone you'd like to use. Um, I'm gonna go with this image here that I've kind of searched for already of Jerry Garcia. Um, an image of just the face and shoulders would be best. Um, I'm gonna have a lot of coloring to do in here with this image um, because of the guitar, but I think it's a good example that I'd like to try. So I'm gonna go over to Photoshop here after I copied that image, go File New. Photoshop should recognize that I've copied an image, and so we won't need to adjust the size yet, but here we go. Our clipboard should remember what size the image we copied. Go ahead and say create, and you hit command V to paste in that image. Now we do want to um, start out by, if you don't have a black and white image, we do want to turn this image black and white. We could do that by going to image adjustments, hue and saturation. We just want to desaturate this image, so we're just going to turn saturation all the way down to zero. And next we will check the size of this image. So we'll go to image and image size. And with let's look at the width in pixels for a second here. And so 900 pixels is what we have. I'm going to lower that width to 500. Um, whatever the height is, it should automatically adjust, but a width of 500 will be good. And uh, my image happens to be square, so the height goes 500. If your height doesn't go to 500 as well, that's fine. You may not have a square image. Resolution at 72 should be good. So I'll say OK. All right. Um, you can notice that shrink my image a little bit. I can hit Command-0 to kind of bring that image back to fill in my screen. And we're ready to keep on going. So um, next thing we're going to want to do is uh, give this uh, image an auto tone or just balance the levels out and what we can press is command shift L in order to do that um, it just makes the darkest areas darkest and the lightest areas light um, didn't really change much with this particular image um, it may change more with yours if it doesn't have as much contrast already we want there to be a good amount of contrast here so next thing we're gonna do is create um, what's called a quick mask we want to separate our um, person from their background and there's a lot of ways that we've covered how to do that already um, we're gonna cover one new one today um, what we're going to do is take our pencil tool, actually, and um, make the size 10. So I'm going to enter 10 in here, um, press 0. Um, mode is normal, opacity, and all is good. So we're going to go ahead and take our pencil tool, um, and now we're going to enter into what's called quick mask mode, which is this little square with a dotted circle inside of it, right below where we pick our colors. I'm going to click on that, and now I'm just going to draw kind of a loose outline that goes right around the edges. So I'm clicking and dragging with my pencil tool, going around the edges of our subject. And I'm going to go along the edges of the guitar as well. Just clicking and dragging along the edge here down along that edge there. Um, I don't actually have to go worry about going back in and filling all these areas. We're gonna do that with the paint bucket in a second. I think this is all basically blocked in because there aren't any negative shapes in there. Um, so next thing we're gonna do is take our paint bucket tool and we're just gonna go ahead and click inside of this area. If you don't see your paint bucket, it's probably because it's hiding behind the gradient tool. So click and hold on that to find your paint bucket. Fill that in and then next all we're gonna do is hit the Q key on our keyboard. And what that's going to do is turn this selection into, um, or turn that area into a selection. So basically, um, that's all we needed to do. Now you see that it gets a little loose around the edges, and that should really be fine, I think, for what the effect we're going for here as far as pop art goes. So if I hit um, Command Delete, that is going to turn that back area into white. Um, and then I'm going to hit Command D to deselect and we are ready to keep on going forward with this project. So next thing we're going to do is duplicate this layer. We can do that a couple ways as well. We can right click and go to duplicate layer. You can hit command J as well. 
um, to get a layer copy. Now this layer on top here we're going to add a filter to. So we're going to go to our filter up here um, in our system menu and go down to our filter gallery. In here we want to open up our sketch options and go to halftone pattern. So here in halftone pattern we want to make the size as one. So I'm going to pull that down to one and contrast I'm going to go up to 40. And so you see I have a nice good contrast going now with this. You may want to just contrast differently based on your image. Um, I might take this to around 35, 35, 40 seems good. We want some of these dots to be appearing. Um, you know, if you go too low here, you don't get many dots, it's more gray tones, but we really want that contrast to be pretty strong. So around 40, 35 to 40 seems to be pretty good. Um, so that's going to work for me. I'll go ahead and say okay. And next thing we're gonna do is add yet one more filter to this. So we're going to sharpen it up a little bit. We're gonna to go to filter, and then down to sharpen and we are going to um, smart sharpen here and this is just going to make our um, image a little crisper um, with these dots and everything so what we want to do for options in here is let's turn this amount up to 500 which is pretty much the max I'll turn the radius down to 1 or the radius is already at 1 so that's good and we'll go with the noise as 0 Okay, so that really just removes any uh, gray tones um, at all. And then removing here, we'll go to remove Gaussian blur, and uh, that should make us all set to keep going here. So there we go, we have some nice crisp dots, good contrast going with this image. Um, and now we can get into um, one last thing before we get into color, is we're going to go ahead and change this layer style to multiply. <laughs> All right, and that just kind of blends it a little bit more with the image underneath it. Um, it won't matter too much actually because the image underneath it we won't really see. We're gonna add a color layer right in between. So if we click on this layer one, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer right above it in between those two layers. And in here I'm gonna add in my colors. I could actually make this bottom layer invisible. Um, don't really need it for much. So on this layer two is gonna be our color layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick a color for his skin tone. And we'll start with the skin tones and then kind of layer all the other colors over it. So I'm going to choose this kind of a peach color here and uh, go back to my pencil. You can use your pencil, you can use your brush, and just go ahead and start to fill in areas of skin. Now obviously my brush is a little small. If I want to increase it kind of quickly, I can use my bracket keys. So bracket keys are right underneath your plus and minus symbols. If I just hit my right bracket key, that will enlarge the... Um, brush, you can also go um, up into your brush menu at the top. Like I said, I'm not going to worry too much about um, other shapes in here yet. Uh, I'll leave the hair for last, but I'm just going to go right over the eyes and the beard and everything. Um, I'm going to come back in with other colors and, um, and do that part later. Actually, what I skipped here was I wanted to do the um, the whole background color first. So I'm going to actually just skip back for a second, take my paint bucket tool, I'm going to choose a color for the background here, maybe kind of like, it should be something bright. So I'm going to choose kind of like this lime green color. Go ahead and fill everything um, so that you have a background color going. And then I'm going to jump back to um, my skin tones that I was coloring before. So if I just hit I on my uh, keyboard, it'll bring me to my eyedropper tool. I'll get that skin tone back that I had going before jump back to my pencil and then I'm just going to kind of start adding color back into these areas here. So getting in the skin tones next or first really and then like I said we'll paint the um, hair tones and other colors and things like that right on top of them. You know things like the shirt as well. So maybe now I will skip over to doing like his hair. His hair is kind of a grayish color in this photo. So um, you know, I'll go with a white-ish kind of gray for the tones of the hair. And just keep painting these in on this color layer that we've created here. And again, you can always kind of go back and paint in and go in with other colors if you find you went kind of outside of the lines. But again, it, this process initially was a uh, screen printing process. So there was some, you know, mistakes and things like that kind of a loosely 
um, colored image, if you will. So now I'm going to take a contrasting color to kind of that green, kind of choose like this red-violet-ish color, um, and go into his shirt with some of that. And um, you kind of want pop art to have some really bright, almost odd colors. That was kind of a signature of pop art. And so again, I'm just really loosely going in and coloring in these areas. It doesn't have to be colored really perfectly. Um, just getting in some of these last spots, and then I'll go into the tones in the guitar, kind of last. I think that his shirt would be back there too. Um, oh, just realized I forgot his beard. So again, I'm going to hit I on my keyboard, uh, go back to that, and I'll get in the white of his beard here. I think you can see the neck probably through there. And that looks pretty good. Maybe I will hit my bracket key a little bit to just make this smaller. He's got a mustache hiding in there. And that seems good. The other thing I may do is also take like a really good, uh, just like a white, and maybe zoom in, um, command plus, and scroll up here and just hit the white in his eyes just a tad. Just a little bit of white behind there so we can see where his eyes are at a little bit better um, and this looks pretty good you know again I could go into a color for the guitar I think I will really quick um, let's see I'll make that like a deep dark uh, red kind of color because I'm pretty sure that's what color that guitar actually was so again bracket keys um, make that brush bigger and um, you know I'm not sure I'm crazy about that color because it gets kind of dark in there I kind of liked that really light color, so maybe I'll use something really kind of odd. Um, go back in my history a step here, and um, you know something similar to that green almost. Maybe I'll go with like a light yellow or something like this. Something that's really going to stand out or orange. There we go. I think I got it. So uh, make this guitar kind of like an orange color. But again, the brushing doesn't need to be very precise. Um, and then just. And go along the edge here. As you can see, I kind of went into the hand area there. Um, so what I could do is just hold I or hit I on my uh, keyboard, grab this color, and then I can kind of go back and paint right over that spot where I kind of got a little loose with my painting. I might take actually and borrow this white color here. Again, hitting my bracket keys to kind of adjust and maybe hit the uh, the frets a little bit on here and make those a little bit different color, but. That's about it. And so um, I hope you have a lot of luck and have fun and get creative with your own uh, pop art portraits here. Command zero to zoom this in. And um, all right, that's that.